Hey everyone, it's Rebecca from DevourDinner.com. Welcome to my kitchen and happy Sunday, everybody. I'm excited to be here, are you? Well, I tell you what, today we've got a fun recipe. It's actually one that I love from Disney Cruise Line. Um, it is truly a favorite and I wanted to showcase it yet once again. But before we get started, let's make sure that all of our technology is working and you can hear me because that's important. <clears throat> We are live on both Facebook and on YouTube today. So wherever you are joining me from, welcome. Looks like the sun just came out because I am getting a lot of light from this other area here. When I prep my cameras, we had cloud cover. So we might need to adjust that, but welcome, welcome. Go ahead and say hello, let me know. Can you hear me okay? Um, I'm seeing some hearts go by, so that's fantastic. And then we're gonna just double check that we are live on um, YouTube and on Facebook as well. So if you're coming from either of those platforms, we're excited to have you. Let me adjust this light over here. There, that's a little better, not so bright. Hi Chris, how are you? Hi Lisa, hi Peggy. Hello Catherine, welcome Amy. Amy is here, she is the admin from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group. We're excited to have her. Typically her team of moderators joins in as well and we are grateful for all the love and support that we get from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners. So if you're hopping on over from that group, I'm Rebecca from DevourDinner.com and I love to go live and teach you how to use some of your small appliances that you have in your kitchen that you may not know all the tips and tricks with. And that's the fun of being live where I can answer questions in real time to help you at home make these recipes too. Hey, Kathy, how are you? All right, everybody, let's dive in. Let me grab this link for bow tie pasta really fast. And we're gonna drop it in the comments so that you all can see it. If you were on a desktop computer, open up a separate tab and go to that recipe. You can follow along right with me. If you're on your mobile device, don't worry, I'm gonna be giving you all of the great information as we go, and you can always refer to the recipe later when you're making the recipe. Hi David, how are you? David's from Alabama, welcome, welcome. All right, let's get going here. So this recipe uses bow tie pasta. Now this recipe is a smaller recipe, it uses half a box. Today I'm gonna to double it, make a little bit more because I'm gonna share with some friends today, and so I want a little bit of extra. We're gonna cook the pasta in some chicken broth. Um, we'll be using some heavy cream, some Parmesan cheese. I have already cut up some mushrooms into some bite-sized um, pieces. We're gonna go ahead and turn our Instant Pot onto saute so it can start heating up. I forgot to do that. We'll also be using um, some sun-dried tomatoes. Now you can get sun-dried tomatoes in the bag like this, which is what I prefer, or you can get them in the jar where they're in oil. Um, either works, whatever you have. I do love the ones that are sealed in the bag because, wow, they're so soft. They're so soft and tender. I don't know if you can see those. They're so soft, and then they're wonderful to throw onto salads or into other recipes that you might have, and they're just, they're lovely. They're so fragrant. So we're gonna use those today. Um, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of onion powder, some minced garlic, and that will kind of round out the recipe. Make sure you also, you know, grab a loaf of French bread or focaccia bread because it's fun to serve with. And of course, this recipe is also fabulous. If you have um, some rotisserie chicken that's left over, you can throw that in and kind of give a little oomph to this pasta dish. But otherwise, I really like this pasta dish because it's light. It has a light cream sauce. Um, the first time I had this was on a Disney Cruise Line. Um, back in 2019, I did a 14-day Panama Canal cruise with Disney, and this dish was one that was served oftentimes in the main dining rooms during the lunch hour. And let me tell you, anytime it was available, I was there eating this dish. I loved it, I craved it. Um, it was just so fantastic. All right, don't hesitate to say hello when you jump in. Hi, Patricia. Patricia's from New York. Welcome, welcome. All right, what did you guys all make for Cinco de Mayo this week? I wanna hear. 
want to hear what you made, what you're doing, all the good stuff. I'm going to keep tra track of everybody over here. Hi, Robin. Robin is from South Florida. Now we do have the overhead camera. As you know, if you're just jumping in, um, we're going to make a bow tie pasta recipe. I have set the instant pot to saute. So what it's doing is heating up that bottom element. We're going to add a little bit of butter. You could also use olive oil and we are going to saute up the mushrooms. We're just going to cook them a little bit till they start sweating and breaking down just a little bit and saute those up. Then we'll add in um, some minced garlic before we go on with the recipe. It's a quick step. If you want to jump over these steps, you can, but I do love when you take this extra time to saute the um, mushrooms in butter. The extra flavors that come out of those mushrooms, I think really does help enhance um, the recipe. So let's see here. I'm gonna put just a little bit of butter. We're gonna, let's see, you wanna see top down, I bet. Here we go. Do you see that butter will melt really nicely? We're gonna add in the mushrooms. Now, add as many or as little mushrooms as you like. The recipe calls for um, about a cup of diced up mushrooms. Um, I've got about a cup and a half here today. Remember, I am doubling this recipe. So we're just gonna let that do its thing. And as this heats up, these mushrooms will start to break down. And that's what we want. We want that butter to coat over the mushrooms. We'll notice that the bottom here, we're gonna start seeing some of that caramelization that goes on. That's all normal. And I will help teach you how to deglaze the bottom of your Instant Pot because it is so quick and so simple and it's just one little step. Robin says for Cinco de Mayo, she made a gluten-free pasta with cottage cheese, red enchilada sauce, black beans, and cheddar cheese. Oh, that sounds really good. Really good, Robin. I love it. We made, um, we made Cafe Rio sweet pork, um, and that is a wonderful recipe you can make in the Instant Pot as well. And we made tacos with it. Um, we made some cilantro lime rice to go with it. So we made these big burritos as well. Um, just had a lot of fun. Now as the mushrooms start breaking down, they let off some of their own natural juices, which adds to the butter. It's doing its thing. If you're curious about my wooden spoon, it's actually pretty cool. It's got a little bit of a spoon portion and then it's extra wide. I got this at Ikea. It was a dollar. So if you have an Ikea near you, I recommend this, kind of fun. Kind of fun. Who has plans next week for Mother's Day? Do you guys know what you're making for Mother's Day? I want to hear. We were just talking about it earlier about what we should do for Mother's Day next week. Now I've just gone in and added some minced garlic. My mushrooms are softening up and we're going to add that garlic and we're just going to let the two saute together. It smells wonderful. Oh, it smells good. You guys are quiet today. We need some chatter going on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. You can see off to the side here that it is starting to caramelize around those edges and we wanna clean that up. So I'm gonna turn the saute off and I'm gonna add, okay, I'm gonna do it away from the overhead camera really quick because it'll steam it up. I'm gonna add just a couple of tablespoons of chicken broth. And then I'm scraping. Now we'll come back. It's not so bad. And that liquid is going to lift everything that has stuck and is caramelized on the bottom. 
it also is going to quickly evaporate out. But if you just add a couple of tablespoons of liquid, whether it's chicken broth or water, and then you scrape, it will lift up anything that was stuck to the bottom. And that's as easy as it is to deglaze the bottom of your Instant Pot. One more thing before we get going here. I've shown this a lot, but not recently. I wanna show you how to replace this, this ring. So our ring is in place right now, but you need to pull this out and you need to wash it periodically. Mostly every time you use your Instant Pot. And it just pulls right out, okay? Wash this with hot soapy water and then you can replace it back on the pressure cooker lid. So you just set it in there and you're gonna use your fingers and you're just going to push it down underneath that silver ring. And you're just gonna work your way all the way around till you get back to the beginning. And when you get back to the beginning, it's a little harder to kind of get it down in there. Go around one more time so that you make sure nothing has slipped back up or popped out. And then you look, let's see, will it focus? There it is. See how you can see the ring on both sides of that metal ring? That's exactly what you want. Okay, that's as easy as it is to replace and wash your ring. You always wanna make sure this ring is properly seated before you pressure cook. If it's not seated properly, it won't pressure up like it's supposed to. So you wanna make sure that every time you're double checking it, that it's back in place before you get going. Okay, let's go on with this. Oh, Robin says she's never replaced it. Now you've never replaced it or you've never washed it? Please tell me you've washed it. All right, the recipe calls for eight ounces of bow tie pasta. I'm doubling the recipe today, so I'm using the entire box of pasta. Then we're going to add, did I? Nope, I guess I didn't. We're gonna add one and three quarters cups per recipe, okay? So essentially what I'm saying is, because I'm doubling the batch, one can is one and three quarters cups. See how that works? So we're doubling the recipe, so guess what? We're putting in two cans of chicken broth. Now because I'm using chicken broth that has sodium in it, I'm not adding additional salt at this point. You'll notice that the pasta is still not all under the liquid. So we're gonna add some heavy cream to the mix. So we're gonna add, if you're doing a regular batch, you're gonna add a half of a cup. I am doing a full or a double batch, so I'm gonna do a full cup. I wanna make sure we get all of that out. And then make sure that your pasta is tucked down under the water. All right, one last thing that we're gonna add is some Prosecco. Okay, it's a sparkling wine and it's wonderful. We're gonna add a half of a cup. If you choose not to use a wine, you could use a sparkling apple cider, you could use a sparkling ginger ale, you could use regular apple juice, or you could just use additional chicken broth, okay? Choose whatever you like. I do like the flavor that it does add to the recipe. We're gonna add a little bit of pepper and we'll add a little bit of onion powder and we're gonna get this going. Make sure your valve in the back is in the closed position. And then we're gonna set this to pressure cook for four minutes for bow tie pasta. Now, if you want your pasta done a little bit more, so it's more soft instead of just the al dente, then do it for um, five minutes. Use your plus and minus keys to adjust the time and it'll be fine. So right now we are set on four minutes. Can you see that here? It'll take just a minute and it's going to start beeping at us. When it beeps at us, that tells us it's accepted those readings. And it's gonna start doing its job, which is heating that bottom element. As it heats that bottom element, it's going to bring all of that liquid to a boil.
Once it comes to a boil, it'll create steam and steam will create pressure and the pressure will seal off the pressure valve in the back and the cook time will start. Once again, we are cooking for four minutes for bow tie pasta. Pretty simple dish. Let's see, Peggy says, I wash mine every time. Um, and if it's kind of smelly from what I have made, I sit it outside in the sun. It helps to get rid of the smells. Yes, Peggy, it really does. So I have a couple of different rings. I have a, a savory ring and a sweet ring. Um, because if I'm cooking with garlic, as you all know, the ring will pick up the flavors of whatever's inside. So if you're cooking a lot with garlic um, or strong, bold, savory flavors, your ring tends to smell like that. So you can wash it, you can throw it in your dishwasher, let it go through the process. People like to set it outside in the sun. You can also put it in your freezer. That tends to help too. But just remember before you use it again, if you've put it in the freezer, let it thaw naturally on the counter because you don't want to use a frozen ring and put back under pressure, it'll be brittle. Kathy, that's exactly what I do. So Kathy says she has multiple rings that she uses depending upon what she's cooking. Hi, Carolyn, how are you? Peggy says, I have a red ring for savory and a blue ring for sweet. Isn't that great that they make these, these rings in different colors? So I have white or the clear and I have red and I have blue and it's all very wonderful. It is all very wonderful. Really makes a difference. All right, you, I have not heard, seen an answer to my question. What is everybody making for Mother's Day? What are you guys thinking about? What do you want to make for Mother's Day? Or maybe the, the question is, what do you hope somebody else makes for you for Mother's Day, right? Because that's what we want to know. That's what I'm curious about. How many votes do we have for me to go live next Sunday on Mother's Day? You guys are so quiet today. I need some chatter. I've been debating if I should go live next Sunday or not. And I know there's so many of you. All right, I'm starting to see the hearts now. The thumbs up. Um, oh, Peggy's making crab legs in the Instant Pot. Very good. Uh, Carolyn says going out for Mother's Day, LOL. If not, someone else can cook. Hey, let me tell you, this last year for um, Thanksgiving, now I've always cooked for Thanksgiving and I've always cooked for a huge crowd, huge crowd. Um, just food upon food upon food upon food. And this last year, we went to a Brazilian grill. We drove um and went out to dinner and then we kind of hung out and goofed off and then we came back home and it was the best thanksgiving we've ever had so i support going out give you a little bit of a break amy says she'll be out of town again amy i hope you're with your little ones doreen's taking the day off <laughs> tam okay tam says i love watching you um, make these amazing dishes. So fun. Happy Mother's Day to everyone from Calgary, Canada. Kathy says, no, take the day off. All right. I'd consider taking the day off. I really have. Um, Rose says I'm the mother, so I'm not cooking anything. I want barbecue. I consider taking the day off, but I should also throw out the little caveat the following Sunday, I will be out of town. So if I don't go live next week, I'm going to be gone for two Sundays in a row. Um, a little Mother's Day gift to myself is I'm going to see those little ones. I get to see Little Miss and Little Honey Bear and go and spend some time with them, which I'm super excited about. Um, I can't wait. So that will be way fun. We're going to push this off to the side. Yes, Tam says, sorry, not Mother's Day just yet, giving it in advance. Absolutely. You know what? We like to celebrate mothers for all they do. We like to celebrate parents. Um, mother's Day and Father's Day are a hard holiday for many, many, many people. Um, and it's, it's always a day that has been hard for me 
because I've been through a lot and it's, it's a hard day for many people. Some people are mourning the loss of their own mothers. Some people are mourning the, the frustration and the trials that they've been through, maybe trying to get pregnant or becoming a mother. Um, there's so many different caveats that go into play that it brings up a lot of emotions. And because of that, I love to celebrate women, women in general, because you don't have to give birth to a child to be a mother, to mentor and love a child. Um, I truly believe it takes an army to raise a child and you need, you need parents and grandparents and next door neighbors and coaches and mentors and teachers and strangers all around to help mentor and love your children. And so it's a day for me that I love to celebrate women because being a woman is, is sometimes hard, hard work. And there's a nurturing love that, that women tend to have, um, especially when it comes to kids. Kathy says, I deserve the day off. You guys are telling me, all right. <laughs> Carolyn's like, enjoy the babies. Mine are out of town also. So it makes it hard to see them. It really does. Um, oh, Chris, that's sweet. Um, Chris says, take the time off, even though you'll be missed. Um, yeah, you know, it was a year ago, if you all remember, um, that my son graduated um, with his degree in uh, business management and he got his first adult real-time job, although he had a really good job. Um, he um, worked and managed um, a hotel chain. He was the general manager. So, um, but his new job took him out of state and he had the audacity to take his child with him. And that's been really tough because we've had them here in our same city, just a few blocks away from us for a long time. And um, we really miss them. And so I've traveled to see them quite a bit. It's just been a little crazy. <laughs> Kathy, what did you do to your elbow? Oh, you guys really want that story? It's embarrassing. It's way embarrassing. All right. So we're waiting for this to pressure up so it's still doing its thing. And because we have a lot of liquid in there, the time it takes to pressure up takes a little more time because we have all of that liquid that's got to come to a boil, all right? So it will take a few minutes to come to pressure and we're just gonna sit and hang out. So shoot me off your questions while I'm answering about my elbow. Um, you know I've been working on becoming more healthy. Um, and one thing that I've been doing is I have an Apple watch We're Apple lovers here and I do the Apple fitness plus program. Um, so if any of you have an Apple watch and you use your Apple products and you know what I'm talking about, I love the fitness program. Now, of course there's many apps out there. So I don't think it really matters if you're doing the Apple program or the one on Fitbit or any other app that you love but it has a variety of workouts and they have workouts from like doing yoga to treadmill working or um, core training or hit workouts. And one of the workouts was a kickboxing. And I thought I would just check it out, see what kickboxing was all about, right? It wasn't pretty, but I did a short little kickboxing workout one day and there were just tons of punches, right? Tons of punches. And I don't know. I don't know what I did, but I just hurt this muscle right in here. And so apparently it's like tel uh, tennis elbow or whatever. And so this little brace thing puts pressure on that muscle, which is helping it. It's just a slow process though. Um, but this really does help. I've also used a TENS unit. If any of you are familiar with the TENS unit, um, along with like some BioFreeze or Icy Hot. Um, but it's been going on now for some time and it's driving me crazy, absolutely crazy that something so simple has caused this kind of little flare up drama that just does not want to get better. So that's the, uh, that's what's going on. Pretty simple, nothing major. Okay, Catherine, any suggestions for a new electric pressure cooker? You know, I have the Instant Pot, which I use most regularly. I also have the Milthy brand um, pressure cooker as well. Um, I use them interchangeably. You've seen me use the Milthy on here a ton. Um, I, 
I would say if you have an electric pressure cooker and you're just replacing it, you probably might want to stay with the same brand because then most of your features are similar and you know where they are. Um, but to me, when people ask me, what should I get in a pressure cooker? There's a couple of things I'd like to point out. One, make sure that it has the yogurt feature. So it has the yogurt button on it. The reason is, is you can make yogurt obviously, which is great. And it's so simple to do and it makes the thickest, most delicious yogurt ever. I love to make it and I freeze it and I put it in my protein smoothies. It's wonderful. But the yogurt button is also perfect for proofing bread dough because it is such a lower temperature of heat that when you're making your bread dough, whether it's for rolls or bread or pizza dough or whatever, you can proof your dough in half of the time by using your pressure cooker and you use the yogurt button setting. So to me, if I upgrade to a new pressure cooker, it has to have that yogurt setting because I use it in multiple ways. So that's number one. Um, other than that, I do like being able to adjust the temperatures when you're like on saute, it's like more or less um, heat on it. Um, most of the other features that you have, like this one has a rice feature, multi-grain of porridge, um, a super broth, meat or stew, bacon, cake, eggs, slow cook. I'm gonna be honest, I don't use a lot of the buttons because I use pressure cook and I set the time accordingly. And when I recipe test, I figure out what times work. And so I'm not using those presets. All those presets are is just a preset button of time just to save you from pressing the plus and minus key is really what it is. All right, if you caught that little beep, that was just saying it's now come to pressure and it's now starting its four minute cook time. It's gonna cook for four minutes and those are gonna count down in numbers on your pressure cooker. So you'll see the numbers go four, three, two, one, and zero. When it hits zero, you're going to hear the beeps to let you know that the cooking process is all done. At that point, a natural pressure release cycle has begun and the pressure is slowly being released little by little. You're also gonna see on the front panel those numbers counting up in numbers. In this case, we want to let it release for about four minutes, okay? And then we're gonna start releasing the pressure by opening up the pressure valve and letting the rest of that um, pressure escape. However, because we're cooking pasta and because I'm doing a double batch, let's think this through, right? I'm gonna pull this over so you can kind of see a little bit. We know our liquid and our pasta is like halfway up, right? Whenever you cook pasta on the stove, you get the starches from the pasta and those starches are what bubbles over and makes a mess on our stove, right? Well, the starch is happening inside of our pressure cooker as well. So we have all that buildup of that starch and that bubble. By allowing the natural pressure release to happen, we're allowing those starches to calm and settle down. Pretty simple, right? But sometimes when we open up that pressure valve, some of those starches start spitting out at us. When that happens, we wanna close the pressure valve and let it settle again. That's called a controlled pressure release. Um, it's pretty simple. It can be startling when all of a sudden things start spitting out. It happens often when you're making soups or anything that you have a high volume of food in your pressure cooker. So we might have to open and close it a couple of times before all that pressure's out and we open it back up, but it's super simple to do. And I love when it happens because I can show you at home how easy it is to just close that pressure valve really quickly, which stops all the spitting of what's inside. Kathy says, I love cooking pasta in the instant pot. I do too. And the reason I do, I, as you noticed, I cooked with the chicken broth. The purpose of using the chicken broth is the pasta is going to absorb the liquid inside. So as the pasta is cooked and gets soft, it's absorbing the broth, which is flavor. Now you can use water. Like we've all boiled water on the stove or boiled pasta using water on the stove. So you can use water in this recipe and substitute, no big deal. But the flavor the broth adds is fantastic. And if you don't wanna use chicken broth, use a vegetable broth, okay? You can substitute any way you like. Um, <laughs> Bill just dropped a recipe on doing chicken breast. That was great. 
perfect. Um, he's in the background here dropping some links for me. In fact, I'm gonna drop the recipe for this bow tie pasta again, really quick. And I'm also gonna drop a couple of other pasta recipes um, that we like. So another one that we like to do is teriyaki noodles with the homemade teriyaki sauce. If you haven't made teriyaki sauce yourself, please, please, please give this recipe a try. It was one of the first on my website. I've been making it for, oh my gosh, decades, I feel like. Um, it's wonderful, thick teriyaki sauce. So you know if you ever go somewhere and you get a rice bowl with teriyaki sauce and that sauce is just thick and kind of hovers on top, that's what the recipe is with those teriyaki noodles. Um, it's wonderful. And I love to freeze the leftovers in ice cube trays. Again, sounds weird, but one or two frozen ice cubes of teriyaki sauce is the perfect amount when I wanna steam up some vegetables and put on a little side dish for something. And then I have teriyaki veggies. See how that works? Um, yeah, so that one's way good. So we've dropped that one. Let me also drop the lemon garlic pasta this one, especially this time of year, is a favorite, and, and it's a fan favorite. Um, it usually starts to go crazy up between Easter and Mother's Day and continues on throughout the summer, and it is a wonderful light pasta. Again, um, lemon garlic pasta, so, so easy to do. Um, so I really love that recipe as well. Kathy says, I love your teriyaki sauce recipe, especially for the meatballs. Okay. The meatball teriyaki recipe. Um, we'll get that link dropped here in just a moment. Um, it is so, so simple. Um, you use frozen meatballs, it's the teriyaki sauce, it pressure cooks in no time. Um, it has been a favorite. I know it sounds a little bit crazy and bizarre, but it's been a favorite. And as a busy mom, I wish I would have known about recipes like this when my kids were busy in baseball season and football season and basketball season and we were running different directions because it would have meant a real meal. Um, and that's what that teriyaki meatball is. I think it cooks in zero minutes, which I know sounds crazy, but you can adjust your timer up and down to zero minutes, which means it takes the time to heat the bottom element and pressure up. And then once it pressures up, it takes another little bit before it registers and then it beeps and says it's done. So you can be eating in no time. There we go. Bill just dropped the teriyaki meatballs. Thanks so much. Robin says, I want to try the teriyaki meatballs. Robin, please do. Please do. And then take a photo of it and make sure you tag me on social media so I can see it. Um, because I love to share those photos um, with everybody. All right. Did you hear it beep? It did. It beeped. It's now in its natural pressure cooking release process. Um, so it's counting up in numbers. We're already at two minutes. So we've just got two more minutes and then I'm gonna start releasing the pressure on the back. Um, Peggy says, great for parties or potlucks too. Absolutely. In fact, I've got a recipe for sweet and sour chicken and sweet and sour meatballs um, as well. Um, the sweet and sour meatballs people have used for like pool parties, barbecues, um, and they love it. And the kids come back for it more and more and more. So that's a fun one too. Very, very fun. All right. Nope, we're still in two minutes. I'm gonna scan through here, see if I missed any. All right, I think the consensus is I am taking next week off, which means I will be gone for two weeks. But when I come back, I'm gonna have some great pictures of Little Miss and Little Honey Bear. Um, little honey bear is getting close to being a year old. She turns a year at the end of June. Um, so she'll be 11 months old and she's crawling and pulling herself up onto things. Her personality has come out big time. Um, and I'm hoping we can get some good photos. She's been just young enough when I've been there that it's hard to get some good photos. We get, you know, snapshots, little quick things with the phones, but not the real photos that we like to do. Oh, Peggy, um, the meatballs with little smokies and pineapple. Ha, oh, that one is amazing. Um, you guys are doing great pulling all these recipes out of your hat. Um, so that recipe, 
you could just do that always. Um, it uses a barbecue sauce. It uses an apricot preserve off the top of my head. Um, when I make that recipe, my boys, they just stand here with toothpicks and they just eat and eat and eat. Like they want to eat it as an appetizer, but it's a full meal. Um, truly a fun recipe and so, so easy to do. It's great for, you know, when you're watching the game, invite people over and you've got a game on TV that you're watching and cheering on, you know, your players. Um, it's just quick. It's easy. It's fun. That's a good one too. All right, we're at four minutes. Now make sure you move your pressure cooker away from cabinets, away from any overhead um, light fixtures or anything like that. And then we're just going to open the pressure valve and let that steam come right up. Now remember, if it starts spitting out any of those starches, we're just gonna close it. That's it. See how easy that is? Now it didn't start spitting yet, but that's all you're gonna do. So we're going to let that out and we'll see what it does. Now when we open this up, we are going to add in some of the sun-dried tomatoes and this is what really gets some more flavor into this sauce. We're going to add to it some shredded Parmesan cheese. If you can use the fresh grated Parmesan, it's better. Um, Uh-oh, there we go. That's starting to spit. Okay, when it spits, stop it. <laughs> you don't want that shooting all over your kitchen. And then give it a minute because what's happened is all of those starches have reached the top. So give it a minute to settle. And as it settles, then we can open it back up and we can let that pressure out. Um, something that's kind of fun that I'm gonna serve it with today is this is a rosemary focaccia bread. I got it at Sam's Club. Smells absolutely heavenly. Um, I'm just gonna slice it up. Cut a few slices of this. Um, of course you could make your own focaccia, you could use rolls, whatever. Um, but it's just fun to have something to dip. I'm a dipper and I love this sauce. This sauce is a very light cream sauce. Um, and that's what I really like about it. It's not heavy like Alfredo. Um, so it's a very thin sauce and the heat from the pasta and the liquid that's inside will help to melt the cheeses. It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Peggy says, yum. All right. For any of you who have joined from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group, welcome. Um, Amy is the admin over there. We sure appreciate her support. Um, and I'm Rebecca from devourdinner.com. I hope you'll follow me over here as well. I do like to focus on easy to make recipes for busy families using common ingredients, using the Instant Pot and the air fryer. Um, I love them, especially as we hit into summer and you don't want to heat up your house, but you also don't want to go out either. I can't afford to go out every night. I actually, I don't like eating out because I like to know what's in my food. And I like to choose the ingredients that are in my food. It makes me feel better. Um, and it saves me money in the long run, which I appreciate. Hey, Mary, how are you? Let's see. Mary says, I was told a long time ago to put a trivet on my pasta with the legs down when making pasta so it helped cut down on the foaming. Y you can do that. So what Mary is saying is you put your liquid in, you put your pasta in, you take a trivet and put it on top. I've heard people do that. I don't. Um, it's one more thing to clean, but some people say it really works. I don't want to miss any comments today. <laughs> okay, I apparently missed this one from Peggy. My husband is telling something about apparently I'm not going to be a kickboxing instructor. No, no, I'm not. And let me tell you, I had fun doing that kickboxing workout. I thought it was fun. I was like, hey, this is cool. It's something different, right? It got my heart rate up. It got some cardio going. You know, I feel rough and tough. Like I'm not an old buddy duddy. Um, clearly kickboxing kicked my booty. Um, so no, I'm not going to do it. Not if I keep having this kind of problem. Um, I do a lot of the yoga workout and the core workouts. 
Um, I've really been working on building my core because you guys all know I have a bad back. I have rods. Um, I had my spine fused years ago. Um, so those are the workouts I love. I love the treadmill workouts. Um, I do a lot of the walking slash running. Um, what I do love about the Apple Fitness Program, and I'm sure it's similar on Fitbit and any of the other apps that you can use, is they show you the version they're trying to show you and then a higher version and then a lower version. So if you need modifications to do it easier, you do this version. And if you have more stamina or more strength, you can do the higher version. And so I love kind of toggling to where my level is. And of course, when you do it in the privacy of your own home, nobody knows how good or bad you do it anyways. It's just that you get up and that you do it. So that's what I love. Okay, whoa, I was too close to that. My glasses completely fogged up. All right. Now that we have this opened up, we are gonna add, let's get top down. I wanna get this cheese added before too much of this steam goes away because I need this heat to melt this cheese. You notice I just kind of tap it in. I just wanna get it underneath that liquid. There is the reserve liquid in here. And right now, let me tell you, it feels like there's a lot of liquid and it's soupy. And I've had people reach out to me and say, Rebecca, it's soupy, what happened? I don't like it. Let me tell you, wait 10 minutes. It's amazing what happens to this pasta sauce after it starts to cool down. Keep in mind, this is all hot. This is so, so hot. We're gonna add in, you can add in as many as you want. What I love is once you get it added in and stirred up, I love to put some in now and then I love to put some on top for garnish, okay? But as you put the sun-dried tomatoes into this pasta, what I appreciate is they soften up. They'll change the color of the, the sauce ever so slightly, ever so slightly. Of course, the more you put in, the more it does change. I've had people say, I'm not a sun-dried tomato fan. I don't love them. That's okay. Make this recipe anyways. Just don't eat the sun-dried tomatoes if you don't like them. But they flavor the pasta beautifully. Just beautifully. Oh, it smells so good. So as this cools, that pasta sauce starts to thicken up. I'm just gonna scrape off some of this cheese that has just kind of attached itself. There we go. I'm just gonna let that sit. It's one of those days I wish I could get somebody to taste this live and give your opinions because it's truly wonderful. Yes, Peggy, the pasta does soak up the liquid. It's amazing what happens as it cools. We're already noticing less sauce as it's thickening. The cheese helps thicken it up. It coats everything just beautifully. I like to let it sit for a minute before I pour it out. Okay, it's still plenty hot in here. Um, we probably still have the keep warm feature on. You can turn that off um, so that it does cool down a little bit because that's important. And then what we're gonna do we're gonna serve it up. So I just have a, a serving dish. Move this off to the side. We'll pull this in. Just put that right there. I want you all to have a good view of it. Those little sun-dried tomatoes really 
want to stick to that spoon. All right, here we go. Oh, there we go. It didn't know what to focus on there, did it? Now, garnish it up with a little bit of parsley. Add some of that green to it. Spread those sun-dried tomatoes around because it just really adds to the dimension, the texture, all the things. And like I said, this is a recipe that you can add your rotisserie chicken to. If you're gonna add chicken, add it after the pasta's cooked and just stir it in with everything else. Um, it makes for a great meal all on its own. It's a very light, refreshing dish. Of course, serve it up with some bread. Let's dish some up. Let's do that. smells just wonderful. There's some mushrooms right there. There we go. We could add a little bit of Parmesan on top. Just sprinkle that on. A little bit of garnish there. And then of course, you remember that focaccia bread, the rosemary focaccia. Oh, we've got, we've got a whole meal. I'm going for it. It's still really hot. Lots of steam going on here. Mm. Happy dance. True happy dance. Oh, it's good. And the pasta is cooked really well. I love the four minute time period for bow tie pasta. Um, the centers where the pasta is kind of pulled in is, is like al dente, but you've got the perfect softness throughout the pasta, which is really wonderful. So good. It's really good. Carolyn says that bread looks delicious. You know what? I'm excited for the bread. In fact, I'm going to cut a little piece and I'm going to dip it. In the sauce. I'm going to cheat here, you guys, because there's like lots of sauce right here. And I'm a dipper. Just going to absorb that up. There we go. So it's not a thick sauce. Remember, this isn't a thick like Alfredo. This is a light cream sauce. Now this rosemary bread, I bought at Sam's Club and it, there's two of them that come in the pack. And it was like, I don't know, $4 and 50 cents. It was super cheap, um, which is why I got it. I thought this will be fun. Oh, Oh, definitely. So it's got rosemary all throughout. It's soft. Looks like they brushed the top with maybe a butter or garlic butter. It is really good. Pick that up at, at Sam's Club. It has two in it. So you can separate it, freeze one, and keep the other one out. Whatever you want. But there's plenty of bread. Let me show you. Look how big that is. And I took a slice out right there. So that's really a big, great size portion for a family. You've got the pasta here. It's fantastic. Great, easy recipe. I hope you guys will try it at home. And make sure you take a photo and tag me. I wanna see these photos. Okay, everybody, this has been a fun, nice, easy little live today. And it's always great to be here. Based on popular demand, I'm not gonna be live next week for Mother's Day. So here's wishing all of you women out there a wonderful day celebrating you. Being a mom, being a woman can be tough and hard work, but the love and the joy that you give to your friends, your neighbors, the children in your life is so needed in this world today. And I'm grateful for all of those women who have helped me raise my boys into the strong young men that they currently are. So big hugs to all of you women. Next week, I celebrate you. Um, I hope you have a fantastic week. 
Um, and I will keep you posted with pictures from Little Miss and Little Honey Bear and all the exciting things that I do with them. In the meantime, remember to be kind, love one another, give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. You're doing fantastic. Keep up the great work. Big hugs, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye now.